Now, in the evolutionary thinking, if there is a structure in the body, then it must have an evolutionary past. And so if, if we have vestigial organs, like the appendix or any one of those, then obviously these structures were once useful and are no longer useful, and they're used as evidence for evolution. So the gill structures, apparently, which develop, and the, the, uh, the eye structures, which are not necessary, and the appendix, and all of these. And this list of vestigial organs by Widersheim in 1895 consisted of about 100 organs. And everybody said they were obsolete organs from our evolutionary past. Well, today we know that this is not the case. The thymus, which was on that list, triggers the immune system and it activates T systems. The pineal gland, we know, is important for melatonin. Thyroid gland was on that list. It produces thyroxin. Pituitary gland become, became the master endocrine gland. And uh, the semilunar folds of the eye, they cleanse and lubricate the eyeball, or the appendix is absolutely essential in determining friend and foe in the bacterial world in that early immunological development. So there is no vestigial organ. So that fell by the wayside. And here is a publication which says, since it's not possible to unambiguously identify useless structures, and since the structure of the argument used is not scientifically valid, I conclude that vestigial organs provide no special evidence for the theory of evolution. Interesting, it's published in the Evolution Journal. So, again, science has a problem. 